Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Carol Christian Chapel Service. It's good to see you. Happy Monday morning to you. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 17. Chapter 17 of the book of Luke. Luke's in the New Testament. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we're going to be in chapter 17 of the book of Luke. And uh, I want to share a few things with you this morning. I want to tell you about this really cool story uh, here in chapter 17. And um, I think it's a good way to kick off uh, the month of November here a little bit. Uh, I know it's the second week of November, but uh, this is a good way for us to start talking about a very important topic, and that is the idea of being thankful. Um, you know, we celebrate Thanksgiving in November, and uh, it's a great holiday where we celebrate with family, and we talk about the things that we're thankful for. And uh, I think it's important for us to always be thankful to God. And I want to share a little story with you this morning about uh, a group of people who were thankful to God. And I want to show you how, um, how Jesus handled this situation and how amazing he is and how wonderful he is and how we should really be thankful to him um, because we are so blessed and God is so good to us. And uh, I just want to share a couple things with you this morning from the book of Luke. Now, this is the story of 10 lepers, okay? Now, lepers are not leopards, okay? He's not talking about the feline uh, predator that has four legs, that walks on four legs and uh, hunts and, uh, you know, has big, sharp, pointy teeth. No, this is talking about 10 men who were unfortunately afflicted with this terrible uh, thing called leprosy. And leprosy was an awful, awful uh, disease to have. Um, it, it really would just, it would do terrible things to your body. And it was an awful way uh, to live. And unfortunately, leprosy sometimes even took people's lives. And uh, it's a sad thing. But I want to show you how God handled this leprosy and how he healed these amazing 10 lepers. All right, so let's go ahead and get right into it. We're going to look at Luke chapter 17, and we're going to start in verse number 12. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we're going to ask him to help us with this uh, lesson today. So let's pray, and uh, we're going to see how the Lord is going to just show us something from the Word this morning. Lord, I thank you for your love towards us. Thank you for the time that we have here. Thank you for the teachers. Bless them, encourage them, strengthen them this week. Give them the, uh, the, the knowledge that they need to teach uh, these students everything that they would uh, to learn this week and, uh, or give them the physical strength that they need. And, and Lord, just be with all the students. Help them to be obedient. Help them to listen. Help them to learn. Uh, and Lord, I pray that we would just keep you at the forefront of our minds through all that we endure this week. Uh, give us the uh, ability to uh, live our lives with you as our focus. And Lord, I pray that we would understand these concepts that we're about to learn this morning. I pray that you would take uh, the foolishness of my words and, and allow the, the Holy Spirit to have liberty in the hearts and the minds of everyone who's listening. And I pray that they would learn something that maybe helps them love you and, and grow closer to you and become more dependent on you and, and, and obe obey you. And uh, Lord, I pray that we would just see this example uh, that you've given us in, in this story. And uh, Lord, I just pray that you'll move and work in a mighty way as you always do. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, verse number 11. I think I said verse number 12, but let's back it up. Verse number 11. Uh, <clears throat> it says this, Luke 17, 11, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, now he's talking about Jesus here, Jesus is the one going to Jerusalem, it says that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Okay, now Samaria um, was full of these people called Samaritans, and um, Samaritans and Jews did not always get along. God's people and Samaritans didn't always get along. Jesus probably, as a Jew, would not be as welcome in Samaria as he would in Galilee. Um, but nevertheless, he's traveling, and he passes through this town full of people who may or may not really want to see him. And the Bible tells us that in verse 12, as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. 
So he goes into a place that has um, a group of these men who are sick with leprosy, and they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're social distancing here. They're, they, they know that contact with other people could potentially infect other people with leprosy. It was a contagious vi- uh, 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 thing and uh, illness, and you did not want to share it with other people. So uh, they stood afar off. But being sick, they also knew that they needed to be healed. They needed someone to help them, (coughs) excuse me, help them. And they had heard about how Jesus had been healing people in his travels. So they heard he was coming through their town and they waited for him. And when they see him come by, verse 13, look what they do. It says they lifted up their voices. In other words, they they cried out. They, they, uh, they They weren't just like, hey, hey, Jesus, hey, are you... Hey, can you come talk to us? No, they yelled out and they said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. So there's there's two things here that I want to share with you. Number one, um, they call him master. They were willing to submit to his authority. They had heard about what he had been doing. They had heard about his reputation and they wanted to follow him and become a believer, so to speak, some of them, because they're using this term master. They knew he was a teacher. They knew he was a person of authority, and they wanted to to have Jesus come over and heal them. And how do I know that? Well, it says it right here. The second thing, it says they have mercy on us. Um, They felt that they deserved their affliction. They felt that they deserved to be sick, and they thought by Jesus coming over and healing them, that they, he would be demonstrating mercy to them. And so they're begging him, Lord Jesus, please save us, help us, heal us from our illness. Now, what do you think Jesus did? Well, I'll tell you what he did. The Bible tells us, verse 14, And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. Well, why would he say that? Why wouldn't he just go over there and, you know, put his hands on them and heal them? Uh, Was he scared? Was he afraid that he was going to get sick? No. Um, What the custom was, if you had leprosy and you were healed, you would, or you you recovered from leprosy for whatever reason. Maybe you were, uh, you know, one of the ones who was was blessed and it didn't uh, take your life. Maybe it only took a few pieces of your body and you were done with it. And there were no more white spots on your skin to show that you had uh, an active uh, case of leprosy. And what you would do is once you thought you were healed from it, once you thought you were better, you were well, you would go to the priest and the priest would look you over. He would check everywhere on your body to make sure there weren't any of those white spots. And if there weren't, then he would declare you clean. He would say that you are clean and you are healed and you could go back to normal life. That's what you wanted. You wanted to go back to your family. You wanted to go back to work. You wanted to go back to the store and live a normal life. And you couldn't do that if you had leprosy because it was so contagious. It was so so uh, deadly and people were afraid of catching it, you couldn't live with your family. You couldn't, you know, interact with people. You had to go into quarantine, okay? And here we see Jesus, instead of going up to them and saying, you're healed, he gives them a command and he says, go and show yourselves unto the priests. Now, the thing that these guys would have to do now was exercise faith. They had to believe that Jesus was going to heal them if they simply obeyed him. And the Bible says it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. So they believed God. They believed Jesus. They, they trusted him, and they had faith. And so they go off, and they start to head towards the, 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 the priest, which is them being obedient. They were doing what Jesus told them to do. And as they're going, okay, they get healed. They get cleansed, the Bible says. And I think that it was an immediate change. They knew that what had taken place. They didn't even get to the priest yet. And the Bible says in verse 15, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, did something different than the others. The Bible says that he turned back and with a loud voice, he glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, Jesus' feet, giving him thanks And the Bible says this, that he was a Samaritan. He was someone who would not have gotten along naturally with the Jews, but here, or in Jesus for that matter, because Jesus was a Jew. And here's the thing. He 
gets past all of that, you know, hatred that he might have felt in his heart for Jesus. He asks him for help. Jesus helps him, and he goes back, glorifies God, gives him thanks, and bows down at his feet. Verse 17, look what Jesus does. Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith had made thee whole. So I want to kind of share a, a couple things. I want to help us visualize this awesome story. And I want to share three points with you about what Jesus did. And now, real quick, on the way to Jerusalem, he's traveling, Jesus is traveling, and he's going uh, to Jerusalem, all right? And as he's going through Jerusalem, or excuse me, uh, Galilee and Samaria, he see on his way to Jerusalem, he sees uh, these ten men who had that deadly disease of leprosy, and these guys they trusted Christ, they trusted Jesus, and they stood at a distance and they called out and they said, "Lord, have pity on us, have mercy on us." And when Jesus saw it, Jesus says, "Listen, sure, uh, go so, show yourself to the priests." And as they walk away from Jesus, as they're, as they're being obedient to, to him, the Bible tells us that they were immediately cleansed. They were clean. Their leprosy was gone. But one of them, and only one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he comes back to God, and he begins to praise God in a loud voice. And he throws himself at the feet of Jesus. And, you know, Jesus looks at him and he goes, well, where is everybody else? You know, why are you the only one? who comes back and glorifies me and gives me thanks. Where's the rest of them? Where are the other nine? And I want to share three points with you this morning. And I think these are important things for us to understand. And my first point, and if teachers, if you're writing these on the board, um, let's just simply write, God deserves the glory. Point number one, God deserves the glory. Okay? And... In order to understand this first point, I think we need to first talk about what is glory. I mean, how can we say that God deserves something if we don't even know what it is, right? So let's ask ourselves a simple question, what exactly is glory? And then I'll explain to you why he deserves so much of it. So glory is this. It's, it's the idea that we recognize how precious and how valuable and how important something or someone really is. Um, you know, when, when you are born, your parents take care of you and they feed you and they clothe you and they uh, help you sleep at night and they make sure that you're safe and you're protected. And as you grow up, they continue to do these things and you really appreciate it. You thank them. You give them Mother's Day cards. You give them Father's Day cards. You, you know, you, you hopefully thank your mom and dad for being awesome parents and taking care of you and loving you, um, even though sometimes you can be unlovable. And that just makes you feel like these these this emotion this love of like wow that is so awesome my parents are so good to me look at all they do for me and look how they take care of me and look how they love me and even though i sometimes don't deserve that love and they love me unconditionally and the older you get the more you're probably going to respect your parents and one of these days you're going to grow up and you're going to you know go to college and you maybe get married after college and graduate college and and you have a, a husband or a wife and you may actually have kids of your own and you're going to see just how difficult it is to to be a parent and you're going to see all the challenges that your parents had faced and you're going to be you're going to be in awe of how they raised you and you're going to be so appreciative and thankful of the efforts that they made to raise you and you are just going to be thankful and you may even have a day where you go back to your mom and your dad and you say mom and dad you know i never realized how challenging it was to be a parent and you thank them and you say man thank you so much for being such an amazing parent you are glorifying them by showing that recognition and appreciation let me illustrate it another way all right have you ever been in the car and you're driving down the road and you see something off in the distance and it seems really really small uh we'll just use like a water tower uh maybe as an example and you see it off in the distance right 
maybe uh, you're in Manchester and you're you see the the water tower up on the hill and you're driving along Route 30 and you see it off in the distance and you can kind of take your thumb and your forefinger and you can pinch it together and you can look at that tower in the distance and you can kind of hold that tower between your thumb and your forefinger and it looks like it's only an inch tall it looks like it's really really small but if you were to drive up to that water tower and park in the parking lot that's right underneath of it and get out of your car with your parents and stand underneath that water tower man you would see just how big it is you would look up at it in in amazement and think wow something that i thought was so small the closer i got to it the more i realized how big it is and how grand and wonderful and amazing it is you don't see all the details from so far away you don't realize how big it really is until you get closer to it well god's the same way sometimes we don't realize how amazing he is until we get close to him and we learn more about him and we understand him better god deserves the glory so let's do this let me ask you a question who was the one who healed these men did they just heal on their own no god healed these men And he deserves the glory for doing something that was so amazing and so impossible. And boys and girls, there was no cure for leprosy at this time. You would probably die from it. But here God is doing what he does and giving these men a chance at life. And we need to be careful that when God comes along and does an amazing thing for us, when he um, performs a miracle in our life, or just simply God being God by meeting our needs and answering our prayers and just loving us in spite of ourselves, we shouldn't take credit for God's goodness. We should give him the glory. We should be so just excited. And, And one of the things about glory is, you know, when we glory somebody, what we'll often do is we'll tell other people just how good uh, the person we're glorying is. Like, for example, let's go back to your parents. You know, you you, you talk about how uh, amazing, uh, the amazing job, excuse me, your parents did raising you. And you're like, man, you know, I I can't believe how you guys loved me and took care of me and raised me. You're going to tell other people about how awesome your parents were to you and are to you. You you brag on your parents. We do that sometimes. We talk about how great our dad is or how amazing our mom is, you know, and and that's glorying. And we should do the same thing for God. When God does something awesome in our life, we should tell other people about it. If somebody comes along and makes fun of God, we shouldn't go along with that and be like, yeah, make fun of God too. No, we should defend God. And listen, God doesn't need our help, don't get me wrong, but we should never talk bad about God. We should never get angry with God and upset with God. Um, We should glory God, glorify him, excuse me. And I, 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 the idea that I want you to see what this glory is, it's, it's, we just see how amazing God is. And in verse 18, you know, in Luke 17, Jesus said something. He says, there are not found that return to give glory to God, save this one, this one man. And that's a shame. That's a shame. All 10 of those guys should have come back and glorify God. They should have all just been talking about how wonderful God is and recognizing how amazing he is. And instead, they went off and did their own thing. The other nine, they just went off and did their own thing. They didn't come back to God and, and glorify him. They didn't get down on their knees and, 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 and just talk about how amazing God was. They didn't do that. There was only one that did that. That was my first point. Point number two. The Bible also says that God deserves to be thanked. And right underneath this point, who healed these men? Well, Pastor Chris, you already asked that question. I know I did. But these two things go hand in hand, glorying and being thankful. Who healed these men? God did. Jesus healed these ten lepers who were doomed. They were destined for destruction. And God steps in through his son Jesus and heals them And now they get a new lease on life. They get to live their life with their families and their friends. And they get to go back to work. They get to go back home. And they enjoy life completely. Who healed these men? God did. So don't you think we should be thankful? They should be thankful. Let me ask you this another question. Who gives the doctors the wisdom and ability to help people? 
you know, we talk to ourselves, well, you know, leprosy doesn't exist anymore, right? And, you know, we don't have seri- well, what about what about the illnesses that we do have today? What, what happens when we get sick? We go to the doctor and they give us the medications that we need to help us get better. Well, who gives the doctors the wisdom and the understanding to give us the right medications? God does. Well, you know, who gives us the opportunity to work so that we can put food on our tables? God does that. Who lets your parents have these awesome careers that they have so that you can have nice things in your home? God did that. God did that for all of us. God deserves to be thanked. And sometimes we forget to be thankful. And I love November. It's, I love Thanksgiving. I love, you know, the, the food on the table and the, the, the pumpkin pie and the mashed potatoes and gravy and the turkey and the stuffing. I love all that stuff. But I really love to sit around the table and share with my family and tell them about all the wonderful things that God has done and just be thankful to God. And boys and girls, we shouldn't just do this on one day of the year. We should do this every day. Whenever we pray to God, we should thank him for the ways that he blesses us. We should thank him for the salvation, the free gift that he has given us through his son, Jesus. We should be thankful that he is the one who keeps this world together, keeps it spinning, keeps the sun rising in, in the morning and keeps it setting in the evening and keeps the moon up in the air, where up in the sky where it belongs. I mean, he is in control of everything and we should be thankful for all of those things. Boys and girls, we have so much to be thankful for. Why are we not thankful? Well, sometimes we can get a little selfish, and we can be selfish, and selfishness is sin. All right, and we're going to treat it like we would any other sin. We're going to confess it, we're going to ask for forgiveness, and we're not going to be selfish anymore as best we can. We need to learn to be thankful and not be selfish. So that's point number two. Let's look at point number three. I'm going to give you something to really glorify God about and really be thankful about. Let's look at point number three. Point number three, God is the only one who can heal us inside and out. And I put in parentheses there, physically and spiritually. Third point, God is the only one who can heal us inside and out. Look at verse number 19. It says this, and he said unto him. So here's the man, the, the, the one of the, the, the ten, the one who came back. He gets down on his hands and knees. He's bowing before the Lord. He's glorifying God, and he's thanking God. And Jesus looks around and says, why is he the only one? Why is he the—where are the other nine? And he says unto the man, verse 19, he looks down at him. He says, arise, go thy way. Thy or your faith has made thee whole. He says, get up, go on your way, your faith— has made you whole. Well, Pastor Chris, I don't understand. I, I mean, they were healed already, right? So what changed? What's the difference? I don't understand. What? It seems like this last guy, this one person out of the 10, it seems like he's getting something extra special. But I don't understand how that can be. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me. I thought that Jesus already healed them all. What more could he have done? Well, two things. First thing I want you to see is this. Leprosy, like I told you before, is a terrible, terrible thing. And unfortunately, it would, and I'm not trying to be too gross with you, but the way leprosy worked was, let's just say, and I want you to use a little bit of imagination here, but let's just say you got a little leprosy on the tip of your pointer finger, okay? Are you looking at it right now? Do you see your pointer finger? Can you hold it up and look at it? Good. Now imagine that this disease gets on the tip of that finger, and what it would do, and this is so gross, ugh, forgive me, okay? And I'm so glad we don't have this in the world anymore that I know of. Um, but what it would do is it would slowly eat away at your finger. And like, so your fingernail there, it would it would be eaten up and it would go away. It would fall off. And then your knuckle, it would fall off. And then go down your second knuckle, it would fall, it would, your finger would fall off until it would just eat away at your finger until there was nothing left. And then when it was done with your finger, it would hit your hand and then your arm and keep going. It was a terrible, terrible thing. It was awful. Ah, it's gross. Boys and girls, if for some reason the disease stopped, you would be left maimed. In other words, you'd be missing a finger, maybe missing a toe, missing an arm, missing an ear, or maybe part of your nose. If the disease stopped, you know, and it didn't take your life, you would still be physically damaged for the rest of your life because it would just do this horrible, irreversible damage to your body. Boys and girls, these men who, the nine who walked away, they were healed. 
but the leprosy had still done damage to their bodies. They still may have been missing a finger or a toe or maybe an ear or something along those lines. This man who came back, who got down on his knees, who glorified God, who thanked God, the Bible tells us in verse 19, thy faith hath made thee whole. I believe in my heart that Jesus restored those missing pieces of this man's body. If this man was missing a finger, I think Jesus gave him his finger back. If this man was missing a leg, I bet you his leg grew right back. It was restored instantly. Why? Because God can do that. It was amazing. But boys and girls, I want you to see something else that's more important than his physical limbs or fingers or ears being given back to him. I want you to see that not only did God heal him physically, but because of this man's faith, that word whole in the Bible, it means spiritually as well. It means that this man who has now placed his faith and trust in the Lord Jesus has now been made spiritually whole. Well, what does that mean? Well, boys and girls, we've talked about salvation uh, for, for a few months now. And the idea here is that he was putting his faith in Jesus, not only as someone who could just heal him, but he put his faith in Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And because of this action, Jesus hadn't gone to the cross yet, but because of this action, this man's faith had made him right in the eyes of God. And Jesus was going to now include him into his family. Boys and girls, God has the ability to not only heal us physically, but he also, more importantly, has the ability to heal us spiritually if we just simply put our faith and trust in him. And boys and girls, I don't know about you, but that's someone who is worth glorifying. That's someone who deserves our awe, who deserves our, our, our respect. We should be talking good about God. We should be talking uh, well about the things that he does. And it also is somebody worth thanking, don't you think? We should be thankful for that. Let me ask you a question. Are you in need of healing today? Maybe you know that you're not as spiritually well off as you'd like to think you are. Boys and girls, I want you to know that he's there. Jesus is there. Cry out to him. Call upon him. And he promises you and I that he will save us. Man, he deserves our glory, doesn't he? He deserves our thanks, doesn't he? He does. He's an amazing Savior. And we are so blessed to be able to know him and to be able to put our faith and trust in him. Are you in need of healing today? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. No one's looking around. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us this morning. Lord, I thank you for everything that you do for us. Thank you for this example in the Word of God where we can look to it and we can just see how amazing you are. Lord, you are worth glorifying. Help us to be confident and tell as many people as we can about the Lord Jesus. Lord, help us not to be ashamed of the gospel. Help us not to be ashamed of you. Help us to be confident. Lord, you are just an amazing God, and you have just taken care of us in so many amazing ways. And Lord, you just, you are worth glorifying. And I pray that we would understand this idea of glory and that we would just glorify you at every opportunity. And Lord, not, Lord, not only glorify, but also be thankful to you. Lord, you have given us so many things to be thankful for. And Lord, I, I pray that every boy and girl who's listening this morning would have a thankful heart not only to you, but also to their teachers, to their parents, to their friends. Lord, help us to have a heart full of thankfulness and, and just be just full of joy, knowing that we are blessed in, 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 in so many ways. And Lord, I pray that if there's someone here this morning who is listening, who has not yet put their faith and trust in you, uh, Lord, they haven't been made whole yet and they know it, I pray that you would just use the Holy Spirit to just tug on their hearts and help them to see their need of salvation this morning. Help them to see that you are worth being thankful to. You are worth glorying, glorifying, excuse me, and you are just worth our, our love and our attention. And, and Lord, I just pray that we would just put our faith and trust in you like this one leper did. He put his faith in you. And, and, and Lord, I just pray that if there's someone here today who doesn't know that for sure, that today would be the day that they would have the courage 
to go talk to their teacher or come see me or any of the other pastors on staff. And Lord, just get this matter settled today. I thank you for that. I thank you for loving us. I thank you for your son and what he did for us on the cross. And Lord, I pray for each one that's here this morning that you would just put a hedge of protection around them. Keep them physically safe. Lord, help this virus not to 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 get to us, Lord. And I just pray that we would just be smart and diligent and, and keep us healthy. And I thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for the school. I thank you for Mr. Riceberg and all the, the teachers and administrators. And I just pray that we'll have a great week honoring you and all that we do. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. All right, boys and girls, you did a great job listening this morning. Uh, it's going to be game time next. So teachers, if you can kind of help me out, maybe erase the points off of the board. If you were putting them up there and just help me get ready to, uh, you know, answer these questions for the boys and girls. All right. All right. It's time for game time. Now we're going to play boys versus the girls, just like we always do. Teachers are going to help me by keeping score on the board in front of you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, it'll be uh, the girls will start first, then we'll ask a question of the boys and go back and forth until we have a winner. Um, but I'm going to ask a question. At the end of the question, you're going to hear this sound. That means that you're going to raise your hand or jump up out of your seat, whatever your teacher is okay with and if you have if you know the answer uh, you're gonna raise your hand or jump up out of your seat and if you give the correct answer you will receive one point if you don't get the answer correct uh, that's you know, gonna be teachers discretion maybe they will call on uh, the opposite team the opposing team or they may just not award you a point it's whatever they decide to do all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start off uh, we're gonna let the girls go first because we are gentlemen and the first question is going to be simply this. We're in Luke chapter 17, and the Bible tells us that Jesus was moving through two towns. He was moving through two towns. The, f the second town that he mentions was Galilee. Who can remember the name of the first town that he was moving through? Starts with the letter S. It starts with the letter S, the name of the first town. <laughs> All right, hopefully you got that correct. The answer, the answer is Samaria, Samaria. All right, boys, next question is for you. True or false? The Samaritans and the Jews were best friends. The Jamer J Samaritans and the Jews were best friends. True or false? <laughs> First boy with the correct answer, true or false, will get the point. All right, very good. The answer is false. The Samaritans and the Jews did not get along. They did not get along. Next question is for the girls. This story revolves around a group of men who were sick with leprosy. How many? were there in this story how many were there listed in this story girls this question is for you first one with the correct answer gets the point all right hopefully you got that one correct the answer is 10 there were 10 men who had this horrible condition of leprosy next question is for the boys. All right, boys. Out of the 10 men, how many returned to Jesus to thank him? Out of the 10 who were afflicted with leprosy, how many of them, after they were healed by Jesus, returned to thank him? Boys, here we go. All right. The answer is only one. Only one returned to thank Jesus. Next question is for the girls. All right, girls. I had three points on the board. Uh, we're going to talk about point number one. It revolves around the idea of glorifying God. The one who returned to thank Jesus got down on his face 
he got down on his hands and knees and he glorified God girls this is a tough question teachers help me out in your best words in the best way you can describe to me what glorifying God is do your best to describe what it means to glorify God All right, that's a tough question. Teachers, do your best to help them out. The uh, correct answer or something along these lines would have been, I would have accepted, uh, the idea is just recognizing how wonderful God is, um, just worshiping Him, praising Him, um, and just, just seeing how uh, amazing God is. The one leper who came back, he glorified God and he also thanked God and he got down on his hands and knees and recognized just how amazing Jesus is okay next question this one's back to the girls no that's not right hold on boys it's a boys turn okay next question is for the guys I told you the second point was thanking God being thankful this this one who was healed came back and he thanked God. And my second point was, you know, it's good for us to be thankful to God. Now, why should, this is a tough question, but I kind of talked about it a little bit in the lesson, but why should um, we be thankful for God? And again, this is another hard question. Teachers help me out here. But why should, give me like one or two reasons, one, well, one reason, why we should be thankful to God, in your own words. Very good. Uh, I would have accepted anything from the idea of God was a creator. God, he provides for us. He meets our needs. Um, he takes care of us. He protects us. Something along those lines that God created everything, and therefore we need to be thankful to him. He gives doctors the ability to practice medicine. He gives uh, our parents the ability to work so they can provide for us. Something along those lines, teachers, I will accept that as an acceptable answer. All right. Last question is for the girls. Last question for the girls today. In the Bible, in Luke 17, at the end of this story, the one who returned to Jesus, he glorified God, he thanked God, and Jesus, the Bible tells us, healed the man completely and made him whole. All right, he restored the man. And my third point was that Jesus has the ability to, to heal us both inside and out right what was the word Jesus says go thy way thy blank has made the whole who can tell me what that one word is what is it that made the man whole obviously it was Jesus but because this man exercised this why was he made whole what it's a it's a, it starts with the letter F what did he do that made him whole. All right, hopefully you got that one correct. Boys and girls, just like when it, we talk about salvation, it's this act of faith. It's having faith in Jesus that made us whole when we accepted him as our savior and it's also this man who had leprosy who returned to God who glorified him and thanked him his faith was what made him whole all right boys and girls you did a great job today hopefully you have a clear winner this morning um, and I look forward to seeing you again next week take care